Canada's Miss World contestant, who was barred from entering China to compete in the finals, is now back home. Anastasia Lin flew back to Toronto after spending a week in Hong Kong. The outspoken 25-year-old beauty queen says she was denied entry to China because of her criticism of the country's human rights abuses. Lin is also a follower of the Falun Gong movement, which is outlawed in China. And Anastasia, Miss World Canada, joins us now. It's good to see you again. Tell us what happened when you got to China. So I got to Hong Kong 6 o'clock in the morning and I approached Dragon Air to make sure that my landing visa is a valid option. Um, so they said it's okay. Uh, as a Canadian citizen, I am eligible to receive a landing visa once uh, arriving in Sanya. But they said that they just need an okay from the Sanya authority. And five and a half hours later, they told me that uh, the Sanya authority want to get on the phone with me. You waited for five and a half hours? Yes, I did. And so they told me they made sure my Chinese name, my uh, date of birth, and my address in China. And they told me right, right away on the phone that I'm not eligible to go to China. Did you ask why? I asked why. They told me there's no reason. No reason was given. So you spoke to someone on the phone, no reason given. They hung up. They hung up. And then what? And then the Dragon Air official told me that I'm not, uh, I don't have permission to board the plane from Hong Kong to Sanya. You had thought that this might be the case. I mean, you had thought that you'd probably not be able to do this, but you went anyway, Anastasia. Why? Because I think it's my every right to be in the competition. I'm the rightful Canadian representative. And I'll, I'll, I don't think that it's right to discriminate a contestant in an international contest, especially if China wants to build an international reputation and they have Olympic Games coming up. Um, I just didn't think that they were, they were going to do this. And we, I, yeah. No, and I was just going to say, we spoke to you during this time when you were having these troubles. And at that time, you were worried about your dad because your dad had been visited and talked to by a couple of the authorities. He lives in China. Yes, he does. Yeah, right now he does sound worried, but he doesn't sound as tense as before when he first got threatened. Um, the Chinese media started uh, uh, writing editorials uh, criticizing me. Uh, that does add a lot of pressure for him. He's still living in China. Absolutely, and you must be worried about him. You had said that you were disappointed that this new government, new liberal government, uh, didn't stand up for you. And we got a statement in part from Global Affairs Canada. I just want to read in part what it said. It is the sole prerogative of every country or territory to determine who is allowed to enter and who is allowed to exit. So basically saying it's up to China. It's definitely not just an administrative issue. This is a matter of principle. When a Canadian tries to speak up what she believes right within Canadian border and get punished by a foreign government and barred from international contests, that is not right. And when our, uh, our government doesn't speak up, it sends the wrong message to the Chinese community and not just the Chinese community, also to our future Olympic game athletes that when they speak their mind, they might be also barred from China and our government's not gonna back them up. It also sends the wrong message to the Chinese government that they, our Canadian government will allow them to abolish our own citizen like this. And um, I, I just don't think that's right. Anastasia, good to have you here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Best of luck to you. Thank you.